This is the New Right, a uh, podcast for the lost arts, reclaiming the literary holy land from the heathen. I'm here today uh, with my normal co-host, Dan Baltic. Dan Baltic. But we also have our first guest, uh, Matt Lawrence. Hey, nice to be here with you guys. Yeah, Welcome, great to have you on. I don't think either of us, I've never heard you on a podcast. I mean, I'm not saying, I don't know, maybe you've been on Terror House Radio, Matt, but I've never heard a podcast with you before. Do you do many of these? Nah, not really. I've done like, I think three of them and they've all been with Matt 40. <laughs> okay. Well, I should listen to those too, but no, I think we definitely wanted to get you on because uh seemed like a, an interesting person who maybe a lot of people out there ha- haven't heard from. Like everyone knows your work, but people haven't heard as much from you personally. So looking forward to having the chat today, but I, I realized I might have jumped the gun a bit. Um, we have to obviously intro Matt to, for those who may not know him. Um, Matt's a multi-talented artist, musician, fitness guru, and graphic designer. Um, he is the director of, uh, of art and graphic design for Terror House Press, um, where I have been published, as well as many others. Um, he did the cover for my book, Dragon Day, uh, but he's also done the, he does all the covers for Terror House. Um, a lot of our listeners out there may know him as the guy who did the covers for Delicious Tacos, first two Iconic novels, finally some good news, and uh, The Pussy, which is one of my favorite Lawrence covers. Um, <laughs> and uh, he's also, uh, you're in a, an original member of the blogging movement, uh, now now known as the, the Manosphere. Um, I guess you'd be uh, what they'd consider a member of the class of 2010. Um, and his main contribution at that time uh, was a blog called Bronin the Barbarian, uh, which is now available in compendium, fo- compendium form uh, from Terror House Press. And Dan and I both uh, gave that a read uh, prior to this episode. Very funny book nice. that everyone should buy. Um, but yeah, again, Matt, welcome to the show. Oh, thanks very much. I appreciate it. Um, so, yeah, man. So, yeah, you're right. Uh, I guess pretty much the only thing anybody's going to know me for online these days is all my artistic stuff. Cause I, like you said, I've done almost all the, the covers for terror house press. The only one I did not do was masculinity amidst madness. And that was done by Owen Cyclops, but mm. all the rest of them, those were all me. And yeah, I've got to work with quite a few really, really good authors, man. Like delicious tacos. Like you said, uh, I've done a whole bunch of them for Ed Lattimore recently. If you mm. know him, yeah, yeah. Uh, those have been really fun, man. Ed always lets me do some really cool projects. And then, uh, yeah, I do, you know, all kinds of illustration work. I'm doing an album cover right now. And then uh, I got one I just finished up for a band I play in. So mm-hmm. if you guys want to hear like Red Pill Death Metal, check out my band Thought Purge. <laughs> <laughs> no, we love Red Pill Death out. Metal. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, no, I, Sabaton, uh, I think- actually, one of my favorite bands. Huh. Oh yeah, I've seen them before. Those guys oh, are right. badass, man. Yeah, yeah. A little history lesson oh. in the song too. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah, they're fun live, man. If you get a chance, go check them out for sure. I was gonna see them last year and it didn't work out, but I think in the next couple of months, I do not want to dox myself, but somewhere near where I live, they will be playing soon. <laughs> so nice. Yeah. <laughs> Good deal, man. Yeah, no, I've listened to yeah. Sabaton as well. But you, with Thought Purge, you just released a song called Boomer Death, right? Uh, that's about a year old at Okay, this point, sorry, not not that new. Yeah. I think that is just a fantastic name for a song. And uh, I assume you did the cover there too. Uh, some yeah. Work. Um, I don't know if I'll put this in the recorded version, but we were actually one of, 
if uh, we, you know, we use music for bumper music. I don't know if you'd want, if you have any tracks that, that would be good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, man, you're welcome to little, use one of those. Yeah. Yeah. If you're, if you're down, it could be a little shock to the system for yeah. some of our listeners, but uh, no, we'll, we can talk about that offline too, but uh, no, definitely, definitely enjoy the music and, and we'll get into the more into the art of it a bit later probably. But, uh, but yeah, no, as you said, you do, you've done pretty much all the covers for terror house and, uh, it's mm-hmm. as well as obviously delicious tacos who's probably the most famous fiction writer from this whole scene and so it's like yeah. if, i always say if if this um you know quasi dissident right post manosphere literary scene ever uh takes off and gets the recognition that we think it should either in our lifetime or later uh matt mm-hmm. lawrence will be remembered you know you'll, you'll be the solitary creator of like the whole visual aesthetic of it which is a <laughs> interesting position to be in but yeah, yeah no, i kind of like that man once i get off my ass i'll try to work with some other uh publishing houses too yeah no it's a good way to sort of get your your aesthetic out there and like it ends up permeating different different people's different people's work you know what i mean and all of a sudden like you're part of this broader aesthetic it's pretty cool yeah, it's awesome, man. Plus, I mean, it's just kind of like good to know that, you know, like literally tens of thousands of people have my stuff on their shelves, too. Yeah. Which is awesome. It, right over there, you know, you like a dozen yeah. of your covers because, it, you know, it's a dozen different books, but it's all it's all your work. Um, yeah. Honestly, you know, it's, before it's I work. knew Delicious Tacos at all, I saw your covers mm-hmm. and I was like, this looks like a cool fucking book. And uh, <laughs> yeah, nice, no, I man. Mean, it, it was. They are. Yeah, that one was a funny one too, uh, Delicious Tacos, because uh, I started on that one and and that was like a second draft or something, like a sketch still. And he was like, stop, that's perfect, we're done. <laughs> For the I was busy. like, uh, yeah. And I'm like, this is all fucked up still, dude. Like the eyes are all weird. And he's like, no, it's perfect, we're done here. Yeah, the weirdness yeah. that makes that one. Yeah. Okay. There you go. I mean, you've said that uh, judge a book. Your goal is to make people judge a book by its cover, right? <laughs> yeah. And I mean, yeah. dude, like people just do not invest enough in their look. I think like there's all kinds of great books out there and they just look like shit. It's oh, unprofessional. Sure. And I, I don't know why it's, it's like, if you're going to go to all this time and effort to make your own book, like I think that you ought to hire somebody that's going to do a good job helping to bring your vision to that complete state. You Absolutely. Know? Oh, because people, oh, sure. yeah, they do judge a book by its cover. And honestly, yeah. man, like that's funny too, because how I joined thought purge was that their album art was so shitty. <laughs> that I had to check it out. I was like, this is fucking horrible. I don't know if you checked it out, but our first album, this, this was before I joined the band, but it was, it's called live, laugh, love. I did see it. Yeah. And, <laughs> Yeah, it was just a picture of some chick on the beach and the logo just says thought purge and it has that like snapchat dog filter on it and i was like either this is going to be <laughs> awesome or just horrendous and I, yeah. I found it on facebook somehow and i was like what the fuck this is awesome and yeah. i hit him up and i was like dude, dude like i play bass i'll make you free art like just let me be a part of this it's phenomenal <laughs> oh, so yeah, yeah 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 no you bring up i mean like in a, in a, in a world where so few people are actually reading books, it's like, you need to, you need to grab people's attention before they even mm-hmm. open the book, which is why, um, the cover becomes important. And just to, uh, you know, advertise you and your services a little bit, listeners out there should know that not only do you do terror house publishing, uh, all their graphic design, but also you will, you're pretty much, you'll do that for hire. Like pretty much anyone can send you their book and you'll help them turn it into into a oh, yeah. copy right yeah so anyone out there listening Absolutely. you got a book uh you know go to matt lawrence.net <laughs> or is it matthew lawrence.net or matt lawrence.net matt lawrence.net matt yeah. lawrence.net yeah if you look up matt lawrence art you'll find it too but uh if you yeah. hire matt on you can come on the pod no, if you hire matt yeah, yeah. Come on the pod. <laughs> little, uh, circle jerk but exactly <laughs> yeah no um, but I don't know if you guys want to get into Bronin a little bit and sort of your origins. Um, so just, it, you know, you're a guy, what well, you're from Southwest Colorado, right? Yeah. Originally, uh, yeah. Southwest corner of Colorado. And, uh, I moved up to Fort Collins, which is a little bit North of Denver. And I went to college there mm-hmm. and I was one of the few people that actually got a good job in Fort Collins. So I stayed there for about 10 years and, about 2010 was when I 
found uh, like a, actually one of my friends from high school, he sent me a link to Royce's blog. And I sat there for like two weeks straight, read that yeah. whole blog, man. It was amazing. It's like world changing. And then yeah. a few weeks after that, I was like, I could participate in this just out of sheer ignorance. I was like, I'm going to go start my blog. Right. Had no idea what was going on with that. But I, I mean, I'm pretty good at being funny when I care. I haven't written mm-hmm. anything in years, but uh, back in the day, man, I just had this fire to write. I could knock out articles like two or three times a week easily. And yeah, so like I, then there weren't many people doing it back then either. There's yeah. 15, 20 people doing it. Uh-huh. And so first thing I did actually was hit up Matt Forney because the, the only blogs I knew were in Mollified, which was Matt's blog at the time, Roycey and Roosh. And so yeah. I hit up Matt and I was like, Hey man, I don't know you. You don't know me. Here's my shit. If you like it, check it out. And so he started adding me to his weekly blog link. And then people started reading my blog, which is like, I got pretty popular right off the bat, which was pretty cool, man. So, yeah. No. Yeah. Bronin seems very much the product of that kind of fire to write. I mean, it seems obviously what we read is probably just the sort of greatest hits, but like mm-hmm. you, you were posting weekly or at least, or even more so. And uh, you just write oh, yeah. about anything. It's cool. Um, and the book is again, very, very hilarious. Um what was the uh what was sort of like the perception i guess of you or maybe some of your friends of the what is i mean it probably wasn't even called the manosphere back then right it was more no it was at that it was okay i wonder yeah is is there knowledge of who coined that i really don't know yeah i like i mean i never particularly liked the name i always thought it was kind of like gay sort of thing you know yeah (laughs) Uh, matt forney mentions that in the intro to uh to Bronin, and I never had thought of it that way, but yeah, it does sound like I think he calls it he like says a gay, it sounds like a gay nightclub. Yeah, yeah dude, and, uh, definitely <laughs> the manosphere. <laughs> <laughs> I guess it's a it's a take on blogosphere, which is also a somewhat cringe word, but you know, names yeah, yeah, definitely. Kind of <laughs> but so you you're introduced to Royce's blog, which, as you know, we ju- we just did a whole show on uh, on Chate- Chateau Hartis. Um, yeah, I listened to that earlier, actually. Oh, well, stuff. thank you for oh, listening. Thanks. Yeah, we, we're, we're pretty proud of the conversation, if we do say so ourselves. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but you're introduced to that by a friend. I mean, I guess I'm trying to ask, like, what was the perception? Of, what was your initial perception of the Manosphere? And, you know, I, uh, and, and those around you, you know, it wasn't the controversial thing it was today, right? It was more, a little bit more in the realm of some degree of acceptability. Uh, it was more like... I mean, more the, yeah, yeah, it was just more like guys having fun, you know, like a locker room or something, that, right? Because, no. yeah, like, uh, because right off the bat, I, I just joined in it. I was like, yeah, I could be doing this too. And I thought it was interesting because, you know, like I had a dating life and stuff, I went mm-hmm. on a lot of dates and shit. And when I first found Royce, though, like, I mean, it really allowed me to like shore up some of my major problems with dating. Mm-hmm. Cause you know, I'd go on 20 dates, get laid maybe once. Right. And like, yeah. what am I doing wrong? Yeah. I always knew I was doing something wrong, but I'm asking the wrong people. None of my friends were players. They didn't know what was up. And then when I found that, I was like, Oh my God, here's the keys to the universe. Right. Yeah. I and mean, so, it's pretty incredible yeah. advice. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it was brilliant. Yeah. And like I, I got Roosh's original book bang. That was really helpful at the time. And yeah, I mean, after a while, that stuff kind of gets ingrained if you get enough practice in it. And I'm not like a relationship guy or anything. I've never gotten married or any of that shit. I never even have girlfriends for the most part. And so, I mean, it's been a lot of just practice on that stuff for me throughout the years. But man, like even looking back, that's, that was like 10 years ago, man. Yeah, we I made mean, it hit the 10 oh. year. It, they call it the class of 2010, right? And like, yeah, 10 years ago now. And uh, I mean, not to not to take the conversation in any kind of pessimistic direction because I, I have a more neutral take on it but like it's amazing how much the culture has changed since then uh oh, and, yeah. and reading reading Bronin uh, we talked about it with regard to Hartiste as well uh but, mm-hmm. but reading Bronin um you know it's very much product of that time I feel not in a not in a way that makes oh, it yeah. hated, in a way that makes it nostalgic I mean you some of you even just getting down to like some of the specifics of what you talk about with Facebook which I don't use Facebook anymore, but like it, it mm-hmm. brought me back to, to 2010, but just the sense of humor. It's like that, uh, 
sort of South Park Republican, it was a term yeah. kicking around, um, that sort of non-PC, not necessarily conservative, but just like non-PC humor was like, you know, yeah. more a part of the culture. And um, for anyone who misses that, uh, you know, Bronin is definitely worth checking out. But but it's not just Bronin, but also like the whole manosphere kind of seemed to be that, yeah, as you said, like guys having a good time. Like that's very, when you read any of the old stuff, that's what it feels like. And it didn't yeah, feel it was easy to see how some of that stuff would become politicized and maybe there was always a political element, but to, mm. in, com- in contrast with today, like it just seemed like it was kind of chill and a good time. Whereas, uh, mm. you know, leading up to Trump, I don't blame Trump, but just to, to mark it in time leading up to Trump and then post Trump, it's all this uh, friend enemy distinction. And all of a sudden, and it's no longer okay just to be a guy trying to get laid, trying to have a good time, <laughs> et cetera. Yeah. Um, exactly man yeah if, if you read bronin then you think about today or if you read artiste and then think about today uh you can really it really underscores that point about like the sort of cultural shift we've gone through mm-hmm. yes yeah, i mean to me that's very much like a good old days sort of thing because that was before like i mean personally i hate american culture i can't stand that shit mm-hmm. i moved out of there for a reason you know I got out of there before it was too crazy. I live in Thailand now. Yeah. And I've been out here for almost four years now. So Mm -hmm. three and a half. (laughs) Yeah, dude. And it's just, it wasn't the country that I grew up in. You know, I mean, if you'd asked me in 2006, like, where's the best country on earth? I'm hands down USA. No questions asked. Best place on earth. No desire to leave. Don't need to see anything else. This is it right here. But now it's like, no not even close mm. it's, just, it's way too crazy there man like yeah i mean i don't like being public enemy number one just because i'm a physically fit white dude you know like yeah, exactly. cool. uh-huh. and like back in the day we didn't have to worry about that stuff i mean like we would kind of like rag on feminists because that was starting to ramp up you know like tumblr and stuff like that was still a thing oh yeah and yeah, so we kind of like tumblr. <laughs> yeah but it was still like it, it was like some stupid thing that you made fun of at the time, not this like shrieking majority that you see yeah. now. So it's like, I right. mean, I couldn't even write that <clears throat> blog now because people don't want to laugh. Like everything's too serious now. It just totally. wouldn't even make sense. Yeah. So, yeah. Who would have thought? I, I know this other people have said this. It's not an original point, but like who would have thought that, you know, the Tumblr of it all would have taken over the entire culture? It's, uh, disturbing yeah. development it, that being said or go on sorry oh no go ahead i was just gonna say, say that being said even though in some ways it seems like that those people won the culture war the battle so to speak um you know manosphere stuff did trickle down a little bit it's still mm-hmm. controversial a little bit esoteric but like terms like red pill beta male and alpha male and game uh, and pickup and all this even though they're not they're not socially accepted necessarily but um i think that they are it, you know the manosphere has lived on in this uh, sort of like dark dialectics mm-hmm. way under the surface of things and i do think it has influenced culture and and um and men and women everywhere still so as oh, yeah. bad as things are um you know it's not like the manosphere just like got wiped off the map it just got pushed underground this kind of yeah way i look at it yeah and i mean even some of that terminology man like uh i kind of mentor a couple of kids that are like zoomer age mm-hmm. and they'll say stuff like alpha and beta and i'm like <laughs> man we came up with that <laughs> yeah no no for so, sure yeah which is, i mean it's kind of cool because it did have an influence on culture for sure because it was and, right <laughs> i think i, I look yeah, at it that way like there's so exactly. much that's stacked against it but the reason it lives on is because it was, if not right about everything, at least right about a lot and right. And, yeah. and, and pointed out truths that, that, um, that are not socially acceptable that we can't talk about. So it's still like that. That's always when you suppress, you know, nature, reality, whatever you want to call it, uh, has a way of coming mm-hmm. back in the manosphere is part of that tradition. hundred <laughs> yeah, percent. Exactly. There's so many times I've heard, Oh, oh usually a female friend say that the alpha beta distinction is based on a biological falsehood that there's no such thing as alpha and beta biologically and i'm like Uh that's you know stupid and (laughs) (laughs) and like and then you say which one are you going for (laughs) (laughs) 
they, I mean, the, the culture just wants to deny this. And whether or not there's like a, a real firm biological definition, we all know what we're talking mm-hmm. about. We all, you know, yeah, we go all exactly. see it in everyday life. Yeah, I mean, that's something that you can just eyeball when you're walking down the street, you know? Exactly. So, yeah, as much as they don't want to deny it, I've actually got a friend out here, uh, my boy Scott. He's a red pill guy, too. And it's funny, too, because uh, I met him in the mall one day. And, like, I just passed by him because he had a little kiosk with his business and start bullshitting. And he's like, hey, man, you ever heard of, like, the red pill? I was like... (laughs) Yeah, dude, I kind of helped invent that shit. And he was like, what? And so, like, I got to talking to him. And when we'd go out, he'd be, like, telling women about this stuff, like, telling them about their, like, from a red pill guy's perspective. And, like, some of them would be like, oh, God, you're right. Like, that's totally me. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, they like, a lot of them haven't even considered this because, like, you know, the mainstream media won't tell you about it. Their friends aren't going to talk about it. So when they get hit with this type of truth, they're like, oh, shit, Um, that's me. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. And a lot of them, you know, you'll get like blatant denial on their part. But some of them, they're kind of just like you'll blow their mind. They're like, oh, man. Yeah. Like, yeah, they'll still deny it. But you can tell, yeah, you got to a little bit. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, no. But, um, you know, on the subject of you kind of being one of the originators of the red pill, uh, I mean, I'm sure some of our listeners will be interested and obviously Dan and I are interested. Like, I mean, and we talked a little bit about Matt Forney, obviously you have a a close association with Forney going on like 10 years now, but, but you've met some of the other like, Oh geez, so to speak, you know, in person and, Mm -hmm. and you worked with, you know, obviously people online. Do you have any like uh, good anecdotes? Obviously Forney opens Bronin with a pretty good anecdote about some dating app some like fringe dating app you guys like trolled or something, but I don't know. Oh, Any, yeah. Anything, yeah. If you just want to talk about your history, knowing these people, I'm sure it's uh, of interest to, to anyone. Well, that one's probably worth hearing actually. <laughs> yeah. um, we had a, uh, after a while, we kind of had this little blogger collective where it was like, we kind of had the best of the best. Right. And Roosh used to have a forum. I don't know if he still has that. He may may or may not, but we, we would all read Roosh's forum. We'd comment there and stuff. And then uh, he actually made a little like backdoor forum for just the bloggers. Mm-hmm. And so we would have our little blogger discussions like, hey, what do we want to talk about here? Like, should we coordinate anything? Because at the time it was possible to like, you get a few people to write about stuff on the same day. And then all of a sudden, bam, you're number one on Google for whatever this term is. We used to call oh, it wow. Google bombing. And so uh, somehow this woman, I forget what her name was, but she ran a dating service called Talkify. And uh, I'd have to go look. The specifics of it kind of escaped me at the moment. But I mean, this is ages ago. But whatever it was, we all decided like, fuck this lady. Let's go get her. So we all wrote (laughs) articles about how shitty this Talkify service was because it was kind of like an anti-man thing. It was was basically like... like what yeah like call? yeah like simps would sign up for this shit like yeah, nobody it was a way was like just talking or whatever. like it was something like that yeah yeah and whatever it was it was like all of us had all coordinated we all launched articles about this and we just ruined this woman's reputation <laughs> i mean she had to hire like a real expensive pr firm to get all of our articles off the front page for her service it was hilarious. Hilar- that is hilarious. Do you, I, I'm not to get into any like IT or like big tech talk of it all, but do you feel like the internet has been like, like, like they, 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 I feel like it's hard to do that shit nowadays. I don't know if oh, I've never it's tried. Impossible. I just feel like they've yeah. done something with the algorithms. They have more sensors. I, I don't know. It just seems like that. That seems so 2010, unfortunately, because it would be great if we could still do that. But yeah, trolling yeah, exactly. is kind of dead in that, in that regard. But I have to say, so I'm, I'm, quite a bit younger than than you i'm younger than dan as well i um didn't get red pill until like 2018 like really fucking late to the game honestly but um i do remember some of like these return of kings articles probably because (laughs) um probably because of you know the google bombing thing the google bombing of it all i mean i remember that these these articles i think there's a famous one i don't remember what the guy's name is but he has like an egyptian 
profile pic about like eat, you know dating oh yeah women with uh, eating disorders remember that one blew up Puck Moses. yeah yeah right i remember right, that right. guy i don't think he's around anymore but um but yeah no i was just saying even though i was like fucking 13 or something like well, a little older than that but like in 2010 that was pretty young but I do remember these these things breaking the surface in a way that unfortunately I don't think happens anymore. Um, no. Because again, we're in the, the age of the, I don't know, friend enemy distinction where it's no longer all good fun of things rising to the surface and triggering people. Now it's like, you know, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> these things get rooted like out. Act of war or something. Yep, yep, no, it, yeah. Yeah, and it's not even easy to find anymore either because <clears throat> everything's so censored now. I mean, sure. everything's controlled on the internet so it'd probably be pretty hard to just run across this stuff if you weren't looking for it yeah i think i think so and um again it's just it's 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 file under politics now you know it's no longer boys will be boys it's politics which isn't you know politics is is good it's good to think about things from a political angle but i mean we're, we're all i think we're all kind of exhausted on politics by this point you know and it's nostalgic for you know the the golden age the good old days yeah. of, uh you know just lighthearted man stuff yeah like back in yeah. the day i couldn't have uh you know imagined that sex dating and everything would become something that's so like oh you're part of a political movement <laughs> it was more yeah. like you know like i remember going on Bruce's forum because i was going on vacation and I wanted to know where to go to hook up with girls. Yeah. And that was just like what it was. It was, you know, it wasn't something, but the culture changed. And when the culture changed, the, you know, the situation changed for guys writing about sex. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like I'd probably be a little bit afraid if I was still in the U S to write some of the stuff that I used to write. Because oh, yeah. I would write about like dates and stuff. Most of that didn't make it into my book because I was thinking about doing a second book of like just my stories because I got some pretty good stories. But uh, so that stuff, but I, I probably wouldn't write about it these days because of oh, the liability. Too. Yeah, you no, know? I mean, like yeah. I avoid that shit like the plague. Like you got to like now yeah. I'm going into dates and I'm thinking like, uh, OK, so what's the law? <laughs> Uh, yeah dude like another reason why I bailed on America, right. man. yeah like you want to bring in like a camera like okay sign your consent form here you go all right now sign this i'm gonna need uh we're good we, let's go down hit the notary real quick and then we can come back and kiss yeah like it's to the point of that level of absurdity for some of these yeah. people it's like oh my god yeah like and I know, like, th this is actually funny because this used to be a trope about, like, you know, American women suck. That was like a big Manosphere trope. Oh, yeah, yeah. And at the, at the time, I'm like, man, it ain't that bad, right? Like, it can't be that bad. I'd never gone anywhere outside of the country at that point. And then uh, I think in 2011, so I'd been blogging for about a little over a year. My brother lived in Sweden at the time. And so... Uh, I went and visited him in Sweden. And the first thing I get off the plane, it's nothing but smoking hot chicks, right? And I'm just like, holy shit, it is that bad. It really <laughs> is. And then I spent three weeks there. And then when I got back off the plane, the first thing I see is this big fat woman in Chicago <laughs> yelling into a cell phone with like four kids screaming around her legs. I'm just like, do I have to come back to this? Good God. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. Yeah. Where's the the last place you live in the U.S.? Was that in Portland? Uh, that was with my parents. Okay. So yeah, yeah, I was with them for a little bit in the Southwest Colorado, and then uh, I bounced around a little bit. Most of my yeah. life, I've lived in Colorado. Yeah. Uh, a lot of that was in Fort Collins. I lived in Portland for like a year. Uh, moved there with my brother. He still lives there. I personally hated that place, so I couldn't yeah, wait to I get just out. I brought up Portland because I was curious. I mean, I've actually never been to Portland and I'm, uh, I, I guess I commend your brother for still being there after everything. Or if, if it's, if, I don't know if it's commendable or not, but like, I mean, it got really, I, I mean, Portland, as you know, has like been insane the last oh, yeah. few years. It's kind of interesting how that place went from the Portlandia sort of chill mm -hmm. <laughs> vibe to, to what it is now. Um, but yeah, yeah no, like I, semi I, I, war zone, semi war zone. Yeah. It's a, interesting place i haven't been there so i guess i can't say too much about it but yeah 
Yeah, I mean, I haven't been there, and I think the last time I went there was 2015 for a visit. It was probably and a lot I, calmer then. <laughs> yeah, it was still calmer. Like, I mean, just hipsters and junkies and, you know, shit libs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> as cliche as that term is, but that's what's no, there. Sure. Yeah, but It's weird, too, because Portland, I would say, is easily one of the most beautiful cities in America. Yeah. But yeah. it's just full yeah. of the most intolerable <laughs> people that you could possibly imagine. <laughs> That's what, I mean, I'm, I'm in LA, like not, not the very different than Portland, but like a little bit of a dynamic there. I mean, all of California, right? Like, or all, maybe all the West coast gorgeous, but tracks yeah. a certain element. Yeah. But yeah, Colorado uh, seems like it has some, some, some stuff going for it. I get a positive impression. I've actually never been to Colorado either. Yeah. I mean, uh, these days it's more like all the refugees from California that yeah. want to escape there they're all moving to Colorado. And from what I've been told, I haven't been back to the U S in quite a while, but um, from what I understand, everybody, because of like the black lives matter riots and all that shit, they're all fleeing the cities and they're coming to the rural areas. Yeah. Now. No, I think and Colorado so, is seeing an uptick. Yeah. Oh yeah. Big time. Like you just, you hope the people that move to places like that would, would, you know, vote against the reasons that made them move from wherever they came from. Unfortunately, of course they won't. Unfortunately, they not enough. So, you know, but yeah, they just bring that same virus that made California a shithole and <laughs> infect it wherever they go, man. It's yeah. terrible. And uh it's weird too, man. Like legal weed. Like I used to smoke weed when I was a teenager. Mm-hmm. And by the time they legalized it, man, I'm so on a personal level just completely anti-weed. It's yeah, like a no, fucking too, loser yeah. drug. If you smoke weed and you're listening to this stop that shit so there is no benefit to it and um but when they did that dude every loser hippie from the midwest all just flopped yeah. Yeah. and <laughs> dude it was like i read some statistic that it was like a thousand people moving to the denver metro area every single day oh my god and it was, so it was yeah. like it made our housing prices like double in the span of like oh, six months shit. Oh, yeah wow. yeah that's cool yeah. And it's, it's never gone down again. So it's crazy there, man. Like one of my yeah. buddies, uh, he sold his house for, I think he bought it for 450,000, something like that. And he sold it for 750. Oh, that's great. Good for him. Yeah. Yeah. But then like anything he wants to buy is like a million bucks. Yeah. So yeah, it's just, it's wild, man. Yeah. Totally unlivable. Denver, Colorado, it seems like a real kind of like oasis. I remember a friend of mine, and this was back in around 2010 as well. He, um, Mm -hmm. both New Yorkers, he he worked in finance and he got a job um, where he was interviewing for a job in Denver and he was skeptical. He didn't necessarily want to move and he went skiing and there was a girl in a bikini skiing, smoking (laughs) a blunt and he's like, I'm moving. And he moved the next like the next two or three weeks. He was out there. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah, man. Like back in the day, like Northern Colorado was the place to be. Man. Like I, I personally never have liked Denver. I lived there briefly and I just I don't have a single good thing to say about that city. But Boulder was really cool. Fort Collins was awesome. Colorado Springs, super cool places, man. I yeah, love it. I kind of enjoyed the time and place aspect of Bronin, to be honest. Like, I, I don't think you ever, ever probably wrote that blog thinking that much about like setting or whatever, but like reading, it, I was like, okay, I get, I get this sense for that. I get a feel for this. Uh, you know, you, obviously a lot, the first chapter, the first like section of Bronin is all you talking mm-hmm. about people at your local gyms, which is very funny. Uh, but like um, just reading that and like getting a, a feel for this place, Fort Collins, Colorado in 2010 and the people, who live there um again not to make it sound like a fucking james joyce novel or something but you know you <laughs> a dubliner you know, Fort collins or but you read yeah. it and you do get a feel for that and uh and it did make me a little nostalgic you know again obviously for the 2010 of it all but also it just kind of seemed like a decent place to be you know uh yeah western but not west coast whatever you call it. it's not the midwest but whatever you call like colorado arizona all that uh yeah it seemed like a good vibe you know especially compared to now <laughs> oh definitely man yeah. like i totally wish i could go back and like replay that era because it was just such a great place to be i mean i don't know if this is true or not but they always claim that disneyland modeled their whole thing off fort collins downtown yeah wow. so 
That's crazy. Yeah. It's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. It was a really cool place. Like if you'd been there for a few years longer than like, you know, your couple years at college, it was a pretty tight knit community. Like you definitely had your townies. Like if you've ever watched South Park, like of course, yeah, a, a lot of South Park stuff. Like if you were from that area, man, like that's what they talked about, you know, because those yeah. guys were from Boulder. Right. And it was funny too, because there was this one where uh, this guy, like, because I played in bands, and there there was a guy in another band that we played with a lot, and he was banging this uh, newscaster's daughter, right? And so they. South Park did an episode and her dad was on that. Huh. And so I, I called him up real quick. I was like, yo, your girlfriend's dad's on South Park, bro. And he's like, motherfucker, huh. you're like the ninth guy that's called me in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, that's funny. So, yeah, it was yeah. really cool because like you'd watch that show and you'd see all this local shit that you knew about. Yeah. Like, Is Castle Bonita, Bonita out that direction? Yeah. 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 I've been there yeah. before. Food's yeah I, I i want I, it's a, it's on my like united states travel bucket list is to go to casa bonita <laughs> yeah like it's a funny place dude yeah like, definitely worth checking out from what i understand those guys are buying it too they yep yep they they closed yeah. on it because it was going to close due to COVID, and they uh obviously have the money out. and the nice. passion so oh, nice. yeah. yeah that's cool yeah yeah yeah, I actually wish, uh, like, I didn't think about this when I was doing it, because me and Matt talked about this, and I had a whole bunch of, like, Fort Collins specific articles, and we decided to pull those out of that book, because it just made it seem too dated, hmm. but then subsequently, like, uh, I got a bad review from one guy, because he was like, where's all the Fort Collins stuff? That's the only yeah. reason I wanted to even read this thing, and I was like, oh, I should have kept it in there. Yeah, maybe but, another, another book. I mean, because I would be interested in reading it. I've never even been to Fort Collins, but, like, yeah, no, I really enjoyed that, again, that element of it, so. Yeah, like, a lot of my articles would just be about something like, oh, this happened to me today, and I'll write some weird anecdote <laughs> about it. Yeah. Like, uh, there's one time where um, I live, like, right downtown in Fort Collins, and there's a train that goes right through the middle of the city, right? And uh, this dude had laid down on the train tracks to kill himself, and which happened about twice, three times a year. Oh, geez. And so like this happened to be directly in front of this gas station I used to work at. And so I was riding my bike by and then uh, I see just this severed head and a body <laughs> and the blood. cops are over there talking yeah. to him. I was like, and my brother was with me. I was like, is that a fucking severed head over there? What the fuck is that? And I walk as close as I can before the cops start. Hey, what are you doing? And I snap a couple pictures <laughs> and then I threw it on my blog real quick. And, and it was just like, what happened on the corner of uh, Mulberry and Mason on blah, 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 whatever date it was. And then I posted the pictures. I was like, severed fucking head. This is cool. <laughs> and, and dude, I got, right. I was just flooded with death threats. It was amazing. Oh, just people were like, yeah. Yeah, like they were like, you're it's sensitive fucking prick. I can't believe you would post this. I'm gonna kill yeah. you. I'm gonna hunt you down and murder you and see how your family <clears throat> likes it. I was just like, whoa. Yeah. <laughs> so you probably took that post down or <laughs> no, I didn't. Fuck them. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, like the only time I ever took one down was I had this article about uh girls with short hair are ugly. And I thought <laughs> that was pretty innocuous. And uh some tumblr or whatever was the thing at the time found that and oh my god dude i was i went from like i average about two thousand hits a day on my blog three on a good day or something and i was getting like twenty thousand hits like all these feminists were all pissed off and i was getting so much hate mail from the thing that it was just so annoying that i had to pull that down well that that is crazy that like posting a severed head was really you know you kept it up it was okay but an article about <laughs> how short hair doesn't look good on girls, which, you know, there's a reasonable yeah. case to be made there. That is just yeah. what you have to take down. <laughs> That's the only one I took. Yeah. I mean, I didn't do it because they wanted me to. I did it because they're fucking annoying, man. Like, I couldn't handle it anymore. Yeah. I'm like, wake up deleting 200 more emails today. Uh. <laughs> so, yeah, man, for all the, like, random offensive crap that i put up that was the only one i ever tore down <laughs> wow yeah uh since we're yeah. talking about like the blog itself i think one of the posts slash chapters that we both enjoyed was uh your one on mesa verde uh national park 
Uh, oh, yeah. The que- dumb questions from Taurus. Yeah. Dan, you were saying that you used to. Yeah. You so also I also yeah. worked at a national park when I was 19. I worked at Yellowstone oh, National nice. Park for a summer. And uh-huh. um, yeah, no, I mean, it's like it, it was very interesting, at least, you know, at Yellowstone. I had expected that everyone would be like an all American type of, you know, kid, you know, mostly young people working there. And there were a few mm-hmm. like that. But there were also a lot of guys in their like 30s and 40s who were uh, addicts of some, you know, shape or form who, who, <laughs> who uh, went there to. I know exactly yeah, what you're who, talking about. Who were there to watch yeah. ad dry out because they can't be around any yeah. drugs because you're like you're five, 150 miles away from anything. So, like, I'm this 19 <laughs> year old kid and, like, you know, straight A's in high school, very straight edge. And suddenly I'm like around all these junkies and I'm like, you know, this, this is an interesting situation. Yeah. No, believe it or not. Like I have that experience too. I, I worked at um, a few different national parks, uh, not for the park itself, but doing trail work as part of like a volunteer crew in high school. I was like padding my resume. I mean, it was a great experience. I was doing more than padding my resume, but I, yeah, I, I worked in a bunch of national parks and like, yeah, definitely similar cast of characters, like some, some real, real strange both people who visit the parks and then amongst the, you know, work staff, uh, you get an yeah. interesting mix of people, which is kind yeah, of, that's like, actually well, hilarious. <laughs> yeah. Your, your article is more about the dumb tourists, right? But, but, but I had those people working there too. Yeah. Right. Which is the funny yeah. part. Like you guys just totally described the same sort of people that worked at Mesa Verde too. It's a real type. Yeah, so. It's like, like I, yeah. after the summer, you know, I kept in touch with people and among a class of like 100 or 150 people working there, at least one was dead. A couple of were in prison. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like with or without exaggeration. <laughs> one one guy was in prison because of something he did in the park. I, uh, <laughs> I guess it was a good story too. I don't know if I can repeat it. <laughs> Yeah, dude. We definitely committed multiple federal offenses in the park for sure. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Like uh, I met these two guys and uh, they were a little bit older than me. One of them was 21 so he could buy us beer and stuff. And uh, like his friend, his name was Luke. And Luke had came up from Silver City, New Mexico. He, like his friend, Larry, Larry dragged him up there so he'd stop smoking crack. And so, like, Luke was this massive crackhead, right? Total fuck up. He was, like, 20, had two kids. And by the end of the summer, he had to go back to Silver City because he was such an alcoholic. He's just like, go home, dude. We can't handle you here. Oh, yeah, yeah, because there's no, you know, other drugs. Like, yeah, people were drinking like crazy, as I recall, at Yellowstone, just, like, hardcore drinking (laughs) (laughs) yeah dude that was quite the adventure that that was also my first idea on how totally just stupid the average boomer is yeah so yeah i'm probably sure you got to see some of that as well like definitely just let a boomer out of his environment yeah oh Oh, and the the staff uh, yeah of course yeah yeah all the above yeah (laughs) Yeah, like uh, the shit that we would get asked was just bizarre, man. Like, uh, because I didn't work for the park itself. My uncle actually had this little, uh, like a food truck up there. And due to a little surveying error, there's this tiny little slice of the Ute Indian reservation that was, that we had leased from them. And Uh so we had this little tiny bit that you could go off the road onto. And there was a food truck and a little like knickknack jewelry store that, this other lady had and so they would come up and uh but but the utes they decided they they had a big casino right and so they decided to put up this giant fucking billboard advertising their casino even though to get to that casino you would have had to drive like about 50 miles to get to the outside of the park and then drive like another 40 miles to the south so we're talking like a good 90 to 100 miles away and so these tourists would see that billboard, come up to our food truck and be like, is this a casino? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, motherfucker, place your bet. I'll tell you if you yeah. want. <laughs> and they'd ask you if you were native, right? <laughs> oh, yeah, all the time. Yeah, yeah. And back then, like when I was in high school, man, like I actually had hair and it was like super red and it was long, man. I was like a metalhead kid. So I had long hair. 
And so you got this like Northern European, like English looking kid with red hair. And dude, like, could I be less Native American? Like, <laughs> I don't think that's even possible. And they sometimes I just tell them yes, because I just fuck with them, right? Yeah. And they'd be like, oh, can we take a picture with you? <laughs> yeah, why not, man? Wow, I can't believe we're talking to a real, like, you yeah. kid. <laughs> sure, dude. Oh, man. Yeah. Yeah. That's good stuff. And yeah. Yeah, it'd always be the same shit, too. Like, uh, I don't know if you guys know anything about that culture, but they had these, like, uh, religious places called a kiva, which was like a pit. And they had, like, roofs on them at the time, but now it's just open, so you could see into it, right? And at least three or four times a year, a tourist would be backing up to take a picture and fall in the fucking Kiva and break their leg. And these huh. things were those a pretty those, good haul. They're like right? the caves in the, the, the hills, right? Yeah, it would be like inside that because it's like an indentation in the hill. And then yeah. inside that, there's like a little pit dug in it. I've seen pictures. So, yeah, no, it's, it's it seems yeah. pretty cool. But yeah, no. <laughs> it's actually amazing. Like if you guys ever yeah. get a chance, go check it out. It's definitely really cool. No, I want to. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's a Misa, yeah. Misa Verde, right? Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, it's a cool spot, man. Like I've never been to Yellowstone actually. Me despite neither. it not being that yeah. far away. Yeah. I mean Yellowstone is amazing. It's it's so big. I mean, it spans three states and like mm -hmm. it's just totally you can see, you know, so many different, you know, aspects of geology and what have you there. Like they have the geysers and they have, mm -hmm. you know, it's snowing in another part of it. It's like yeah, yeah. It's crazy ecology. Mm -hmm. Nice. Yeah, that's yeah, one no, of I the just... things that I do miss about the states, man. Is that the U.S. does have some really great nature stuff. It does. I just went to Yosemite at the beginning of this month, which was incredible. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Yeah. No. Cool. National park system, good stuff. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we don't have anything like that. Thailand's fucking dirty, man. That's the only thing I really don't like about this place is it's polluted and it is nasty. But <laughs> I, I yeah, bet yeah. outside of the cities, though, it's like really pristine, right? Like outside of Bangkok. You know, I've never really been outside that much. I mean, I've only lived in four different places, and that's uh, like Chiang Mai, Phuket. Um, I live in Pattaya now, and then uh, like very briefly in a couple other spots. Mm -hmm. And I'm probably moving to another place here in a couple of months just because the lockdowns here i can't fucking handle it anymore it's killing me it's pretty bad in thailand oh it's ridiculous oh yeah i guess in asia in general it's pretty bad right yeah yeah like vietnam's got it even worse like uh, i've got several friends because i used to live in saigon and hmm. uh they can't even leave their house it's been like two months where they've been literally locked inside their house well that's crazy wow. like, especially at this yeah, season of the game like fucking year and a half in yeah yeah dude and it started off being one of the best places to be because like they just weren't testing anybody so they're like oh we don't have any covid and yeah. then they actually start testing people and then it's like all over the place for sure and it's like oh now we have to deal with all this bullshit so <laughs> yeah it's dumb man haven't you been able to go to the gym in like two months oh geez waiting like, yeah. over here <laughs> yeah well, you got a home gym set up nowadays <laughs> nah man my apartment's tiny it's a nice place but uh, i don't have any room and like yeah. to be totally honest dude i fucking hate home workouts like really people that hate the gym that's how i feel about working out in my own space like mm -hmm. i want to go somewhere and it's like i don't know if you've ever worked from home but sometimes you got to just like change your location. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah and like <clears throat> Yeah. yeah, like, uh, I mean, it took me a long time to be able to work from home because I'd be like, oh, there's video games. There's my guitar. You know, I'm going to go pick that shit up and play. Yeah. And, like, now I can do it. I got the discipline because I've been working from home for, like, 10 years. But, like, when it comes to the gym, I can't do it, man. I need that change gotcha. of venue. Okay. I need that yeah. new location. So, it's like, I'll throw downs on some push-ups or something. It's like, uh, I'm literally yeah. looking at moving across the entire country to go to the gym. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, yeah you get a lot of uh not to you know dox anywhere or talk about anyone who doesn't want to but you get a lot of uh manosphere types coming out there to thailand a la delicious tacos <laughs> meetups i met right delicious there. tacos actually i was gonna say he's out there he's been out there a few times yeah 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 i, I went and uh, he showed up in bangkok and uh we met with my other friend rob who writes 30 days to x if you know that i've heard of it yeah, he doesn't really write much. He just mainly does Twitter now. 
And, Rudy, uh, that was another chair house book, right? No. Oh, okay. Never mind. Yeah. Rob oh. used to do a bunch of like, I, he was really young when he started blogging. He was like 16 or something. And uh, he started doing like little personal challenges. Like today I'm going to learn affiliate marketing or something hmm. like that. But yeah, I've been good cool. friends with him. I knew him through blogging. I've known him since like 2012 or something. He was the one that got me out to Asia originally, actually, because he lived in Saigon. And he was like, yeah, come out here, man. Check it out. See if you like it. And so uh, he popped up from Saigon and we both met Delicious Tacos and hung out with those guys in Bangkok for the day. And then uh, I took tacos down here to Patia and I showed him around for a few days. And then he kind of just did whatever else he did. Because I know he went like all over Thailand. Yeah. I think he went to Cambodia too. Yep, yeah. Yep. So, but yeah, he's a super cool guy, man. I've really talked to him once. To. Yeah. Yeah. No, he's he's great. We we hope he we hope he is a future new right uh, guest. We think we can get him on. But yeah, come on, five tacos. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'll tell him. Yeah, he's a really cool guy, man. Like, man, I really enjoyed hanging out with him in person. He gave me a signed copy. Of, um, finally, some good news. Nice, which was cool. Yeah. 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 So. Obviously, yeah, you did the art, so you know, <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> worth worth giving to you, I'm sure. Um, but no, I mean, we speaking of art, we, we could get a little more into that. I mean, um, just talking about our different, uh, Dan and I can, uh, can kind of highlight some of our favorites. I mean, I always like to highlight, um, obviously we talked about the pussy earlier as a good, uh, mm-hmm. as a good cover, but the other one that I always like to uh, like flag to people is, uh, bad Billy Pratt's welcome to hell with the Casey Anthony picture, uh, which <laughs> I guess you tell you that was Casey Anthony. What's that? Can you tell that was Casey Anthony? So to be honest, I didn't really know who Casey Anthony was. <laughs> like I, I vaguely knew the name. Oh yeah, you're but, yep. Yeah, yeah but that's like, probably so like I had to kind of learn about it. You. But uh-huh. but I know that a lot of people did recognize her immediately. And, and you know, the resemblance is there. But yeah. I don't know. If anyone ever like whenever I'm talking about like Matt Lawrence covers, I'm always like, uh, it's the pussy and uh welcome to hell. You put yeah. those next to each other. It's like I don't know what it's like. A, not a triptych, but like a diptych, like where it's two. I mean, yeah. that is uh, that's one hell of a statement, I guess, about what American women. I don't know. Uh, but <laughs> all I'm saying, like, if I was in like a pop art museum or something that was on the wall, I'd be like, this piece, mm-hmm. this one's my favorite. <laughs> yeah, that's funny, man. That was actually really hard to do because I made the pussy so long ago, and like I'm much better as an artist now than I used to be. And I was trying to like crawl into my brain, like, how did I make that shit? <laughs> and like trying to recreate, like, what did I do? I'm like looking at the old file, like, okay, it looks like I did this. How did I do that? Fuck, I don't know how to do this anymore. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's <laughs> but, funny because some of the stuff you describe about the pussy that is, you know, like maybe um, not intentional. It um, makes it look better. In my, I like the look of it—the kind of unfinished, blurry, hazy. Because like it mimics what I imagine Taco's experience was like in the Philippines or whatever. High and yeah. you know, <laughs> you're just like, oh, that look, kind of <laughs> looks like a girl. <laughs> yeah, it's like an impressionistic quality. There's like a, it's digital art, but there's still an impressionistic quality, which you know, Taco's. Yeah work itself has an impressionistic quality so it's a it's a good fit you know mm-hmm. yeah absolutely yeah and, uh, did you guys read welcome to hell too oh yeah it's oh yeah, yeah that's what, a very oh, good book as we're well. gonna have and, oh it's fantastic um yeah billy pratt is probably gonna be uh, a, a guest soon um nice his book came out basically the same time as mine so i feel like we've been you know, cross promoting a little bit um, mm-hmm. since that time. And yeah, no, I, I love his book. Like People can, we'll talk about it more on the show we do with him, but like, you know, there's a natural comparison between him and Delicious Tacos, which, you know, mm-hmm. but I, I feel like that doesn't quite get to the heart of it. I feel like uh, he's uh, he's just a really skilled pop culture essayist and the, the way he brings it in, you know, with his own personal life. I mean, yeah, definitely. Yeah. That was one of the books. There's many books like this, but Welcome to Hell and Reading Welcome to Hell is one of those books that made me like even more proud to be a uh, Terror House alumnus, like to be on the same label. Yeah, man. Yeah. Your book's good too, man. Thank People you. Appreciate you by yours as well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I try to read, it doesn't always work out that way, but as I'm doing the layouts for our books, I try to read everybody's stuff 
And yeah, I really enjoyed yours, Matt. That was good stuff. Oh, thanks so much for saying so, Matt. I obviously enjoyed yeah. the cover as well. Um, and yeah, that, that case in point with another element that I want to talk about with your art, like and we kind of already said this, but I'll say it again. Like um, one of like the big considerations of why I wanted to publish with Terror House, because you know I give up a little bit of profit, but like I knew I wanted that Lawrence cover. You know what I mean? Like I knew that uh, you know. <laughs> thanks, man. Delicious tacos is like and I'm not. I'm not trying to like simp for tacos as we, as we have on <laughs> the past podcast. So he's, uh, you know, he's, he's pretty much the guy in terms of like fiction writing in this scene. And like, if I can mm -hmm. get the same guy to do my cover as delicious tacos, you know, yeah, I'm, I'm moving up in the world, but it's also, it's not just name associations. The art is also very fucking good. <laughs> well, thanks man. Yeah. yeah. That's a good thing. Uh, I really enjoy making stuff for Terror House because Matt lets me do whatever I want. And so, like, I actually kind of backed off on certain forms of client work. Like, I don't work with small businesses anymore because they're too much of a pain in my ass. And, yeah. like, uh, before I discovered some other methods of income, and, like, that was my main gig for a long time. And I was just taking on any shit job. And I'd say 95% of the art that I've made for clients, I don't show people because it's so shitty. And, but like when I get to work for Terror House, I just get to do what I want to do. And so far, all of our authors have been happy with my stuff. So yeah, yeah it's been good because I could say like, hey, I think this is awesome. So, and I'm a pretty harsh critic on my own work. Yeah. So like, yeah, if I think it's good, it's probably pretty good. Mm -hmm. So yeah. No, no, the covers are all good. We we like uh, ending bigly a lot as well. <laughs> the, yeah, uh, like Trump one. Yeah, and notice that was a hard one, man, because I wanted to make something that was real iconic, where you would just know right away. And there's been so much Trump art and all that stuff out there, and I don't know how it hit me one day, but it, I was just like Dragon Ball Z, <laughs> and so I do yeah. Trump like doing his like Super Saiyan transformation sort of thing there, and I was like, yeah, that's perfect. Nice. Yeah. 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 We noticed the divergence in styles too. Like you have the, the style you did with Welcome to Hell and um, mm -hmm. finally some good news, a real pop art kind of style. And then like ending yeah. bigly, very uh, more, I guess, uh, you know, it's, I think you use like a pastel or charcoal or something. I, I, I don't know art. Uh, it's but, all digital, man. Oh, all right. I was going to say, yeah. it's, it's all, yeah. Yeah. But, I can't draw in real life at all, dude. I'm oh, fucking really? terrible. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Horrendous. Yeah. Like everything I do is on the computer. That's all I know how to do anymore. Do you have like one of those pads where you draw it on, you have to like sync it up? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. no, no. Yeah. Those things are real nice, man. Yeah. Like uh, all the painting stuff I do is in Photoshop and all the uh, like the pop art looking stuff or like anything with sharp edges, that's all done in Illustrator. Oh, I yeah. see. So I guess those are the yeah. main two we noticed, like the pop art versus the. Uh, whatever you'd want else you want like the the, the more pastel -y yeah type. i mean you just when you're reading a book or whatever you just kind of have a you i imagine what but the the sense of of how you're going to draw it and what you're going to draw just probably comes kind of organically as you're reading yeah exactly yeah, yeah sometimes i feel like you know this style would fit a little bit better like with yours for instance i was like maybe i should paint something with this and then i got to thinking i'm like i'm not really feeling that for this one i think yeah it would work a little bit better as a little bit more cartoony or something like yeah, that. Yeah, and, and so, I'm I'm happy with that. I like I like the yeah. cartoony stuff. I like your other stuff too, but like yeah, definitely like the cartoony. I think that's right for my book. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and like yeah. I mean, for some styles, like it definitely would work way better within a certain style. Like if you've ever seen the stuff I did for Ed Lattimore, um, his is all real cartoony stuff. Yeah, and that just would not work as painting. You know, you're right. Yeah, so it would make no sense and like vice versa with like I, I probably could have made ending bigly work as a cartoon or something like that or like some of them could have a little bit of crossover but i feel like most of them it's either kind of one or the other like it yeah. needs to go a little bit more like fine art direction and that's kind of a new thing for me i've only been doing the painting stuff for about a year gotcha and yeah like uh i think you could probably tell too because uh with our our first poetry book is called with light and dust Seen it, and yeah. that was by xenon and fish lou and which is really good too like mm -hmm. if you haven't read their work check that out for you sure should. yeah because i'm not even really a poetry guy and i like that one quite a bit mm. 
but that one was right when I first discovered that that was kind of possible. I was like, oh, hey, I could try this. And like, oh, hey, this is kind of working out. Okay. And then I was like, well, maybe I can kind of push this with my next couple projects. And then I kind of, I was talking to some of my friends that are, I'm friends with a lot of heavy metal artists and mm -hmm. some of them paint and stuff. And I'm like, well, dude, how do you do this? Explain it to me. And then they would tell me what they do. And I'm like, okay, I'm going to go try this. And like, I'm getting better as time goes on with that stuff. So. Yeah. Maybe I'll be a real artist one of these days. Who knows? <laughs> no, I mean, for, for, for you only having done it a year, it looks, it looks fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like, uh, cause design and art are like two different things. Like right. some of those are more design stuff. Like um, what are the, like uh, what's specters of Saturn mm -hmm. was more of like a design thing, with like a logo and things like that. And then the new one that we put out psyche inspector, that's like, right. I drew like yeah. a tarot card for that, but that's yeah. all like very design elements. Everything's lined up and stuff yeah. like that. So that's like something a graphic designer would make and not like an artist would make. Right. Right. So, yeah, no, I, I get the distinction. Yeah. No, Psyche Inspector. Yeah. I, uh, I, I saw that I've been like a little bit interested in like tarot card type stuff, not, not like actually doing it, but like, I, I guess I've been interested in that aesthetic recently. So when I saw it, I was like, Oh, Oh, nice. Got to buy this book. <laughs> yeah, I had a hard one with that, man. I actually started off with painting there and it just looked like shit. I did it like two or three times. I tried a different illustration and then my friend was like, hey, draw a tarot card. And I was like, damn, that's it right there. Yeah, Thanks, man. It's, it seems like that kind of occulty sort of design. It's a, I think it's a good way to like, you know, without putting too much time in it into it creating something that looks like really cool and weird in a good yeah. way you know what i mean mm -hmm. yeah but uh, not to put to you on the or were you saying sorry yeah oh i was just gonna say it's a good excuse to just cram it with detail too <sighs> yeah which is kind of fun that whole aesthetic yeah um not yeah. to put you on the hot seat but one of the reasons we one of the one of the not one of the reasons but one of the things we first reached out to you about uh, that we first reached out to you about was uh potentially doing a new right logo and you know absolutely take your time if you're busy uh but we no, actually i was gonna say i finally have time for that so we'll awesome. talk about that later yeah, that's great. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. We, love that. we can talk yeah. uh, i guess offline about it but um again you know we uh i think dan and i both agree like if we're if we're gonna be doing a podcast about this literary scene like it's pretty much only one person who can uh offer their uh you know their artistic visual aesthetic skills so oh, appreciate that yeah. man yeah yeah surprisingly it's, it's kind of weird man you don't see a whole lot of right-leaning people that are in the art world yeah I mean, that's uh that's like, for sure there's some cartoonists but uh not much more than that man like we got some damn good cartoonists like stone toss that guy's hilarious yeah yeah like uh what's uh Oh, uh, made by jim ben yeah, garrison that guy's awesome too yeah garrison he's he's more boomerish yeah, not really my thing true. but i do i like his art actually but yeah, yeah like uh but there's not many right-leaning designers out there at all i mean i went to art school at one point and it was just nothing but horrible shit oh I'm sure yeah I fucking hated those people dude like the entire industry is just full of like disgusting leftists yeah no dude, i mean that's that's definitely one of the themes of our podcast industry. yeah uh, so yeah you, we you know. guys know then <laughs> yeah, <You> yeah. Know. <laughs> yeah so yeah it's yeah, the like, same I mean, thing the, the the world of both fine art i don't even know about fine art but i imagine um uh I don't know too much about fine, the fine art or art world but if it's anything like the literary world or the entertainment industry yeah it's like filled with these people who are you know on the left and to a radical degree but yeah um that being said i feel like there's a lot of people who do art who are you know right of center or just not you know not mm -hmm. that liberal um and there's a lot of people who obviously write and want to make films and all that so that's well you know it's as with terror house too i think that's part of our mission statement is to like be a place where that work can get uh can get talked about yeah yeah and we even do like some kind of like uh post left stuff too so yeah oh yeah i mean yeah, we're not all, even what like terror house that. yeah yeah so we well, don't want to like totally pigeonhole ourselves into <clears throat> being like one thing you know but for sure yeah i mean there's 
there's a lot of fruitful overlap right now between like certain kinds of post left people or just people who are willing to have honest conversations about things. And then people yeah, exactly. on the right. It's That's been really good. I think not that I'm all about like the red brown alliance of it all or anything and not that I'm like <laughs> a right wing socialist or whatever people call themselves, but like, nevertheless, um, I think it's been pretty fruitful, like, you know, following, following like the fall of Bernie Sanders last year. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Some people are just like, fuck this like and and then yeah. there's the unity of the fringe that happens and um especially for places like care house and hopefully this podcast as we go forward like places mm-hmm. that where the emphasis is on creativity and art i think can be a really really good place for that kind of cross pollination you know yeah definitely yeah. and especially as like mainstream stuff just gets more and more sterile all the time it's just yeah. recycling the same ideas the same crap i mean I won't even go see movies because what's what's right. going to be the next movie? Yeah. Some like Marvel bullshit? Like no, yeah. no, no that, thanks. Again, definitely, definitely part of our mission is like we. Th- there's still like so much that can happen. I think with this like corner of the internet, this space, there's still mm-hmm. so much cultivation that can be done. And when the mainstream sucks so much, you know, especially. Yeah, Absolutely. Definitely. I'm actually pretty optimistic. Like I'm kind of black filled politically a lot of the time. Like the political situation in the U.S., like it's no fun. But like culturally, mm-hmm. yeah, I think there. It's almost like those things sometimes, co- you know, complement each other negatively. It's like if politics suck, which they do right now, you know, um, people are going to turn to culture and they're going to put yeah. put their energy in that. I think that's happening a little bit, you know, mm-hmm. with COVID and following Trump and everything. So I yeah, think. Like, oh, I'm sorry. No. People don't. Have- Oh, they don't really have like an outlet now. So it's like, what are you going to do besides create, you know? Totally. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I was, I think it to the extent this is a good barometer. I've noticed on dates that women, um, a year ago, two years ago, just, you know, consistently very progressive, very like, I can't say anything. I just, you know, if I want to get laid, I have to shut (laughs) up. But, uh, now like in the past month to six months ago, like they are mm-hmm. getting sick of this woke shit and they'll tell me <clears throat> and I'm like, great. Really? Yeah. I'm like, yeah. me nice. too. <laughs> I'm also sick. Of it. Like, and <laughs> Something I've done as a way to kind of uh, attract these women or, you know, kind of a filter to select for them. Um, and uh-huh. maybe we'll get some hate for this because like, I know a lot of people don't like the pod, not our pod, but red scare. I will mention red scare mm-hmm. to them. And based on yeah. whether they've like they like it or not, that's like a pretty good indicator, in my opinion. Totally, nice. yeah, yeah. Red Scare is kind of the ground zero for a lot of this. Yeah. Do, do a lot of people like dislike Red Scare? I thought it was. Uh, I mean, kind of, uh, I know that like Anna and Dasha get like you know people insulting them. In their replies, like you know, uh, lots of yeah. I mean, I think they get. I a didn't lot think that of- was. No, <laughs> I thought that was more leftist. Anyway, oh I no, know. true. I mean, across the board, yeah, yeah, they, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. No, they're they're good. Yeah, we get we hopefully get Anna on someday. Let's see, <laughs> so that's the dream, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, that's actually good to know. The tide's turning, man. Like, I yeah. think it is. By the way, I co-sign on that. Like, I'm not on the dating yeah. market currently, but um, but just I meet these random women, or even and guys too, actually, um, who are like they'll always like have a bunch of disclaimers like not that i think this is a bad thing but like woke stuff has gone too far. <laughs> and look they're not red pill they're not like on our side necessarily but yeah. like they're they're they realize there's big issues with the mainstream narrative i mean i think that's coming to a head mm-hmm. in a big way right now in the united states yeah. um, people that i like even like the the Nicki minaj thing which i didn't even follow that closely i'm not one of these people who like goes gaga every time some celebrity says something kind of right but nevertheless it you know it, there, there is a little bit some narrative slippage going on where people are like just over it with regard to a lot of the covid stuff and uh i just with regard with regard to woke stuff in general um yeah the mask is slipping for sure um not in a like totally dramatic way where people are out in the streets but just in a in a in a subtle way where i think very normal you know normie type people are just like no longer taking it as seriously or they're just exhausted Mm -hmm. um so in that sense i think there is a a cultural shift going on we'll see where it leads i dare not be too optimistic there'll probably be some (laughs) horrible george floyd type shit that happens in a few months or something but 
oh yeah, whatever the yeah. next false flag is. Yeah. Yeah, I mean yeah. they got to regularly schedule <clears throat> those to keep us in line. So. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but I think that yeah. the, the the body of people who feel as if they they don't voice it publicly but they privately go against the mainstream i feel like that body of people is growing and a lot of them are like they're not the type of people that people think are like super based or whatever like a lot of them are like sort of idw types or they start listening to ben shapiro or something but like like you know people (laughs) got to start somewhere yeah and i will take that over people who are just mainstream liberal democrats any day so yeah, and I, yeah I exactly mind. yeah no absolutely like this one woman i'm thinking of she's a doctor and <laughs> like she's definitely not uh red pilled shall we say but the um whole you know thing with all the, the protests and the blm and this is just like it, it pisses normal people off because they like yeah she was telling me like i had to get to work and they wouldn't let me get to work and close <laughs> down the road <laughs> and it's like that yeah. type of stuff <laughs> yeah man for sure that, like that would be the sort of thing that would red pill normies to some of this like i couldn't get to my damn job oh, exactly <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> No, I've had yeah. these conversations for sure. And then people realizing that the way that the, the media covers it is so duplicitous. And then that makes them realize that that's how the way the media covers everything. Yeah. Happens. Yeah. I know. I don't know how you could avoid that at this point. It's yeah, like yeah. so in your face, but it's like, if, I don't know. I think during, you know, the, the Floyd protest last year, it's like people who saw that, you know, the whole sections of cities got wrecked and then the only coverage from the New York times and other sources is all this positivity about how great this is. I mean, that, that'll yeah. red pill anyone, you know? I mean, how much more 1984 could you be? Right. Yeah. And the contrast yeah. between that and how they portray January 6th, not to get oh, too into yeah. that. Oh, but, yeah. But yeah. <laughs> yeah. What a joke. Yeah. You'd think it were uh, the British in 1812. Yeah, right. worse than that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's actually kind of good to hear that from you guys, because like, I only know two types of people, and that's like extreme leftists and the people that agree with me. <laughs> I don't really know anybody that's like boots on the ground seeing some of this shit, right? Because none of my friends in America are still dating or anything like that. So that's cool to hear. Like, yeah, well, maybe it's turning around a little bit. Maybe it's not as hopeless as I thought. Yeah, not I that I'm going back, it's, but <laughs> yeah, right. Like, there's only uh, so yeah. much shit normal but, people can take, yeah. and exactly. you know, yeah. eventually it's just like, ah, that's just fucking fake. I'm not gonna, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm not gonna say the exactly. words anymore. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, like I've been so far beyond that point for like years now that it's just like I just look at these people and like, ugh, because I don't wear masks or any of that shit. Fuck mm-hmm. that. And like, I'll only specifically go to businesses if they let me in without a mask. And I had some dude yell at me at a convenience store, put your mask on. Fuck you, make me. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, uh, uh. (laughs) Like, yeah, I'm not doing that, no. So, yeah, Hmm. hopefully people wake up on that shit a little bit because. Yeah, I think there's just a lot of fatigue setting in for a lot of people. Yeah, a lot of fear mongering. Yeah. Yeah. Not like you guys haven't talked about this ad nauseum, I'm sure, because we all have. But <laughs> well, our podcast is kind of new, so honestly, we haven't talked about the COVID of it all too much. We get yeah. to get a little uh, just day to day political banter in there. <laughs> mm-hmm. But yeah. Um. Uh, otherwise, I mean, it's, I know it's getting late where you are, but I mean, um, we were going to ask. We, we a lot of this we already addressed, but like. Uh, we were going to talk about like your, your success at running a personal business. Seems like uh, Matt Lawrence.net is pretty, pretty big success. Uh, you know, you have a, you'll graphic yeah. design, like just about anything, right? It's kind of, I mean, you have everything from like yeah. pet portraits to, yeah. Mm-hmm. Anyway. Yeah. We would These find days, it. like, uh, I don't know, man. I, I got success from other places. Like, I don't want to talk about it much because if you have like my skill set and I tell you about it, you're going to go replicate it in five minutes. Oh, okay. I wasn't that interested. Now I am. (laughs) Yeah. Like it's, it's easy shit. So I don't want to talk about it because I'll just create my own competition. But uh, yeah, dude, it's, 
like I stumbled onto a couple things that are equally as lucrative as graphic design. So I don't have to do as much of that shit to pay my bills these days, which is nice. So, uh, but yeah, like my main sources of income are books, which I really enjoy doing like books and book covers. I do band logos and album art if I can. And uh, I don't know if you guys have seen any of my band logo stuff, but I like to oh, yeah, like, check it out. those like gigantic, super crazy typographical yeah. heavy metal logos, which those are really fun. And then uh, for certain clients, I'll still do other things. Like I manage a couple guys' websites, although I don't really do that stuff much anymore just because I hate it. <laughs> but yeah, man. Uh, yeah, like certain affiliate marketing things are still pretty lucrative. So stuff like that. I'll, I dabble in a whole bunch of different things. So it's not like I specifically have to do design mm -hmm. anymore, but it's it's nice because now I can pick and choose about the projects that I want to do instead of having to take on every project because I have to. You know? Right. No, that's a good place to be. Matt and I yeah. were um, talking about how the freedom of it all must be great because we are both, you know, in a certain sense, wages and uh, mm -hmm. have to, you know, watch our docs and, you know, lead a yeah. kind of double life as it were maybe me more so than matt mm -hmm. but like you seem like you're pretty free and that must be awesome yeah it is nice man like yeah dox me i don't give a shit <laughs> what are you gonna do take away my clients they all think exactly like i exactly. do exactly <laughs> like, yeah like they won't hire me otherwise or i won't work with them you know i mean i've been asked on a couple occasions to do stuff that i consider morally reprehensive and i'm like nah dude i'm not making your like gross lefty poster go get somebody else to do that shit <laughs> good so yeah. yeah and i i wouldn't even take on most stuff that's political at all i do have one friend that uh i told him i would do his entire political campaign if he went for an office but he's not quite there yet so yeah but uh mayor delicious tacos yeah, like, yeah. what's that mayor yeah, delicious mayor tacos, tacos. <laughs> <laughs> California. It's funny because yeah. <laughs> it is somebody that both of us know, actually. But uh mm -hmm. yeah. Um, oh dude, I hope that does happen. I look forward to that if it does, like the uh campaign posters and whatnot. <laughs> oh yeah, dude. Yeah, I would make those awesome. <laughs> nice. No, but it seems yeah, like man, a combination uh, of of having really good sources of income and and also probably living in Thailand too. Uh yeah, that's been that massively freedom. helpful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cause it's, it's a lot cheaper here. It's probably about half to two thirds of the cost of the U S nice. yeah. like an average city. So yeah, man, I mean, I, I don't make like big bucks or anything. I'm like comfortably middle class, right. I guess. Yeah. Yeah. That's but, dope. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, like if I lived in like LA or something, I'd be fucking broke. Yeah. But if I lived in, like, I used to live in Des Moines, Iowa. If I lived in Des Moines, I'd be fine. So. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah but yeah man like but you're free and you're free to speak your mind i feel like that's the that's the dream yeah. and, uh, it's tragically hard to come by these days but yeah dude it yeah. really is and uh i feel bad for people that have to play that game you know yeah and i mean like could i have been much more monetarily successful if i did something else absolutely but i mean the lifestyle that i lead i'm not interested in a family i'm not interested in having a house or any of that shit i'm a super minimalist I like my alone time. I like doing my creative shit. So what I do works great for me. Awesome. Like, yeah, that's awesome. like a lot of those old school manosphere guys, they actually like, they tapped out of the game. They're all married with kids and stuff now, which is, that's awesome for them. But uh, like certain guys like myself, I mean, I just never really got into that direction, you know? Gotcha. And that allows me to travel around like I do. I mean, I've been parked in Thailand for years. Mm -hmm. I like this place, but if I felt like going to another country and it wasn't stupid hoax fucking virus crap everywhere, then I could pick up and go somewhere. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, we talked a bit about this on the Hartiste podcast, like on on the sort of um, even in the manosphere proper, perhaps, uh, but it definitely mm -hmm. definitely in like the dissident right and like conservative world, there's a big discussion of like, oh, should everyone get married? Should everyone have kids? And um, Dan and I sort of talked about with regard to Hartiste, how like the real message there is like, it's not this, you know, it's not the same for everyone. Like you, you know, you pick your own path, but like the tools uh, of the manosphere, uh, it sounds gay, but like, you know, the, the tools <laughs> that were cultivated by those bloggers, uh, including yourself, 
um the, the end goal is to just like be able to do whatever you want to have that freedom to find that yeah. space of being free and whether that's something you share with the family or not i mean i think it's i think it's valid i guess i, I this wasn't on our outline but i feel like it's a good like concluding question and not to like anticipate the answer too much based on what we just said but do you how much do you feel like the manosphere influenced the trajectory of your life oh in a huge way dude yeah. hugely i mean like basically that was such a life-changing thing for me at the time it was like uh, i don't know it was like i found something that i always knew was there but i was lacking right yeah. like because when I was younger and like my early college days, I'd always been hanging out with like leftist punk rockers and shit mm -hmm. like that. And uh, I'd always been playing in bands, which I still enjoyed that. But like, I always felt like I kind of wasn't really being true to myself exactly. Mm -hmm. And then when I found out that stuff, I was like, this is what I should have been doing the whole time. Like I shouldn't have been listening to these guys about being a nice guy and like doing all this like stupid American dream shit that I've been doing. Like I should, this is the path that I wanted to be on of like controlling my own life here. Because what yeah. that did for me was that like the biggest thing I learned is that there's a way to solve your problems. If you just know how to ask the right questions. Right. right? And so like Hartiste really solved all my dating issues. Like after putting some time and effort into that, then uh, I never really had issues with dating again. Yeah. And then it was like, okay, well, what other issues do I have in my life? How do I fix this? Okay, now I need to know that this is a problem. This needs to get fixed. And now I can go find a solution. So it was like, it opened this world of self-improvement up too, you know? Yeah. And then, you know, the ability to collect or uh, connect with like-minded guys too. That was a huge thing too. Because the people I was around, it was like, yeah, I'd meet guys that I could kind of hang with, I guess, but nobody I really connected with. And that actually let me kind of cut a bunch of people out of my life too, because like I found like when I was reading Royce, it was like I found this secret key and I want to share this knowledge with my friends. And they were just like, oh my God, you're a horrible person. <laughs> like I read this for like 10 minutes and I decided yeah. that like, I don't <clears throat> want to talk to you anymore. And I was like, really okay well fuck you i'm gonna go find some yeah. guys that i do want to talk to and like a lot of those bloggers are still my friends these days too yeah like good friends too like uh i mean i don't see him very often but like jack donovan i hung out with him quite yeah. a bit when i was in he's, Portland. Already, yeah. he's an awesome guy uh tanner guzzy i met him before and his wife they're super cool people um a lot of guys that you wouldn't know they're all gone now and Anyways. would like to remain <laughs> gone. <laughs> uh, I met Roosh one time. He was mm. cool. I've met Matt Forty several times. Of course. Uh, obviously. Um, who else? Cernovich that one time. He was actually the first guy I ever met. Mm. Oh, really? And then, uh, yeah, like way back in the day. Oh. And yeah, like uh, all those old, the only one was out of that old school DC blogger scene that I didn't meet was actually Royce. But I was kind of quizzing those guys. I was like, so like, what's he like? I was like, is, is his game bullshit, right? Is this whole thing bullshit or is it the real deal? And, he, and they were like, dude, he hooked up with some chicks that he shouldn't have been able to hook up with. His game was good. Because <laughs> I guess back at the, de the day, he was like early mid forties or something. Oh yeah. So he was, yeah. Oh. I mean, he was still hooking up with some hotties apparently. Wow. So Yeah. That would, uh, man, I don't even want to speculate about this because I'm not trying to be rude to him, but I guess he must be like in his 50s now. Wow. I hadn't yeah, realized that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, I do wish I could have met him because I'd imagine <clears throat> he was probably awesome. But He's always been yeah, a little had, more isolated though, right? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Like uh, we had him in with that, that forum that I mentioned, but he never really showed up. I chatted with him briefly a few times, but mm -hmm. that was it. So, Got it. yeah. Yeah, but... Uh, yeah, Roosh. Roosh was a cool guy. I don't really follow him much anymore because, like, the whole religion thing doesn't really do it for me. Right, yeah. But, uh, which, I mean, if, if anybody's into that, like, absolutely go for it. Like, I think that's awesome. I actually do think spirituality is important right. for a man. Yeah. But organized religion has never been my thing. So it's like, if sure. you kind of get into that territory, I'm like, ah, you kind of lost my attention a little bit. Oh, but, no, I, I'm kind of in the same boat, yeah. 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 So... But yeah, I mean, that was, 
like a lot of that self-improvement stuff. Uh, and it just allowed me to meet guys that were, I could connect with and learn from too. So I think yeah, man, maybe big, big influence. Maybe it's uh, too simplistic to say, but the embrace of the red pill is an embrace of honesty. And so if you're like willing yeah. to be honest and like, you know, say what's what, it's easier to mm-hmm. form friendships with people because you're not holding any, you know, bullshit back. Yeah, exactly, man. I think that's a good way to put it. Actually, I've never really thought about it like that, but yeah, that's definitely that's it. It is a very honest philosophy. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Hopefully, it's been that sort of path for you guys as well, because for everybody I know that's taken that direction, it's been a really good thing. For sure. I mean, you hear. Uh, obviously, we can wrap up the conversation in a second because I feel like we're ending it on a good note here. But like, you see people who like usually if it's more of the political stuff like the quote-unquote red pill will like ruin their life or like they get doxxed or they just Mm -hmm. don't know how to handle it but for a lot of people especially on the more manosphere side like if you really know how to use the knowledge to your advantage rather than like letting it make you spurg out or something (laughs) um, yeah i see more positive results than negative among the among the people that i you know i'm close with Yeah. yeah definitely like, like, who would you rather be the pre, um, you know, pre manosphere guys, a uh, wagey, whatever, or would you rather be like Jack Murphy after the whole, you know, manosphere conversion where, you know, he has yeah. a pod and he like has his own business and like, that's the guy you want to be even with the, with all the risk that it entails. Yeah. I mean, I, don't actually know who that is, but oh. <laughs> I know it was well, like, uh, out there, yeah. maybe like a newer guy. I have no idea, but uh, yeah, man, I, if I met myself before all that information, man, I kicked my own ass. <laughs> yeah. Like man, yeah. you're a little bitch. I ain't trying to hang out with you. <laughs> uh, well, what you said earlier kind of resonated. Like you, you, I remember when I, uh, I, I get it. It's such a dated meme, but it's still, there's no, there's no better way of putting it. Like when I first got red pilled, I met, yeah, that was very much my thought. I was like, why was I wasting my time trying to appeal to these people? And as an, as a writer and as an artist, et cetera, it's like, why was I trying to fit a, re- you know, a square peg in a round hole trying to like make mm-hmm. my work conform to this shit? When yeah. this, this whole time, I, I, I found it all after college. So I'd gone, you know, liberal college, trying mm-hmm. to fit in there for four years, get out. And it's like, I would just not, I didn't feel like, I, obviously I didn't feel like I wasted time. It was all part of my life trajectory, but like, it was like, oh, I actually, there's actually an audience out there who wants to read this. I don't have to fucking jump through hoops and like, you know. Disguise it, hide it. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. deliver the like, message exactly. without actually delivering the message. Yeah. yeah there's actually a scene out there. And uh, I think it's kind of interesting with you, Matt, because like you, you, you have this association with punk rock and like hardcore and stuff. It's like, I feel like mm-hmm. the manosphere and this post manosphere literary scene, you know, it's a scene like that, you know, it's a scene that emerges yeah. in opposition to some, uh, it's like almost a cliche thing to say, but like, it's as someone who's like punk rock and all that my whole life, like it really speaks to me. Like this is one yeah. of those scenes. And that's, you know, I grew up kind of thinking like, that that's where a lot of great and i think correctly that's where a lot of great art comes from is these underground movements that are made when you know the powers that when it's not the the funding isn't there from the powers that be so to speak so um, yeah exactly it's actually fantastic i mean not that i'm not like fetishizing having a small audience and i do have a pretty small audience but like <laughs> it's pretty fantastic to be part yeah, of it. it's like genuinely edgy underground a little bit dangerous um yeah. you know i wouldn't have it any other way Mm-hmm. Yeah. and i mean the reason yeah, oh i'm sorry matt go on oh no that was it uh, just agree <laughs> uh, I was gonna say, and the reason why you know we're all doing it is not for the money because there, as you say there isn't really much money it's because we want to yeah. do it and that's where good art comes from when you're not doing it because some big company says like we need you to produce something that will get by our sensors it's when someone is just like I only have five free hours this week and I'm going to spend it writing because I have an idea that I want to get out there. Yeah. And like, yeah. that is why we do the good art. 100%. I think. Yeah, man, exactly. And that's like, that's always what's appealed to me. I mean, since I was a kid, I mean, 
back in the day, it used to be, you know, the Republicans and the PMRC and the Christians keeping you down. <laughs> yeah. And now it's like the exact opposite, right? Yeah. So yeah. Like, now it's yeah, like being like, a okay, Christian I'm, is punk rock. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's like counterculture now. It's so weird. It is weird. It's like, yeah. Yeah, I grew up around a bunch of Christians and Hicks. And I'm like, I fucking hate Christians and I hate Hicks. And now I'm like, man, where's those cowboys at? I'm gonna go chill with those guys. Yeah, yeah. Like, oh, you're into Jesus? Right on. You're not going to try and make me trans. <laughs> yeah, it's weird, man. But yeah, I do think it's produced some really good counterculture stuff. For sure, yeah. And interesting what counterculture is nowadays. So, definitely yeah. yeah now we just got to make sure we have a bigger audience <laughs> yeah. yeah no I, I think we'll i think we'll get out there just obviously there's a lot of forces trying to keep it down but i think the work yeah. is is on point so i think i think that's what i said earlier like with, with your work how like maybe it'll one day be uh seen as like this important like scene thing of you creating this this whole aesthetic you know for for uh you know for a big set of writers i mean I, I genuinely think that like one day in some way shape or form like this scene terror house tacos bap mm -hmm. to you know i think it'll be i don't know maybe i shouldn't be too optimistic obviously things are pretty politically terrible and there's always gonna be a lot of oppression of this kind of yeah. stuff but nevertheless it's just the the fucking aesthetics and the work is so good i can't imagine that one day people won't be like actually even just like some nerd academically like actually <laughs> explored the toxic masculinity of the time in an interesting way i don't know something like it's just the work speaks for itself and i think uh, yeah. yeah some new world order historian <laughs> yeah, yeah 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 don't be this or the party yeah. will crush you <laughs> uh, <sighs> all right well, well guys about wraps it up yeah unless dan if you have anything to add or matt of course if you have anything to add or anything you want to promote but um but i yeah thank you for coming on yeah yeah thanks yeah, matt. thank you guys it's really been a pleasure talking it. with you definitely yeah. and uh yeah check out terrorhousepress.com you can see my work you can read matt's excellent book my own thank book <laughs> our many other awesome books we've got a ton now i think we're up to 31 books now and we do at least one, one a month way. so yeah it's always new stuff coming out. It's great stuff. And go listen to my band, Thought Purge. Thoughtpurge.bandcamp.com. Thought Purge. And that's T-H-O-T, -T, by the way. Oh, there we go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, thought <laughs> like that hoe over there, <laughs> Thought Purge. <laughs> oh, yeah, no, good stuff. Yeah. Yeah. We'll have a new album in about a month. Awesome. So you guys yeah, can yeah. listen to that. Awesome. Our hit single, Karen, Let Me See My Kids. <laughs> <laughs> That's literally a song title. Oh, that's great. No, I will, I will check it out for sure.